My name is Nyofal Danubishok Twang Dwich. I'm 19 years of age and I was born and raised in Australia, but my ethnicity is South Sudanese from South Sudan. The negative narrative impact of the media in relation to African gangs in Australia are the subjects of this documentary. The media has gone as far as cancelling community activities like the South Sudanese National Basketball Association tournament. While this has closed future opportunities for the youth, racism has amplified over the years as a result of the negative media narrative, which has threatened our careers and passions. This is my documentary. When my kids are leaving the house, going somewhere, I feel so scared. When they were walking in groups of three, I felt that if they were wearing certain clothes, they were not safe, and those were real anxiety. In our culture, we has been raised and born that we walk as a group. When we are walk three, five people, it doesn't mean that we are gangs. They look at us like we're a gang, you know, that's, that's how the media, you know, made us look. <laughs> that's the way they talk about us. They say, oh, we walk around, and let's say a group of five, apparently that's a gang, just walking around in a group of five, going to a party, you know, we'll look that differently, yeah. We are not gangs. This is how we've been raised. This is the love. People work together, care for each other, protect each other. There's always a bad bunch in, in every culture, okay? To, you know, assume that every single one, every Sudanese person is part of a gang and doing all these bad things. And to me, I just don't really like that. It's not fair. I have to be in my best behavior where I go. At school, um, I was asked if I was in Apex by one of my teachers. Going to school and being asked, are you a criminal or are you in a gang? And stuff like that. Like, how do I go to school every day knowing that teacher thinks I'm a criminal? You just couldn't go into a train or a shopping centre and just disappear into the crowd like everybody else. You, you stood out because you were the talk of the town. And even though you had nothing to do about it, your skin spoke for you. The SSA NBA is uh, the South Sudanese Australian National Basketball Association. And it was a collective group of teams. So everyone would come together for a weekend, play basketball, get to know each other. So it was that sort of thing. And so like that really hurts me that it was gone. It was just an event to bring the community together, basically. And just bring people together. That's what it did. We were so proud to see our young youth participating on the uh, tournaments. And we were wishing that media should come to that program and see our youth or young generation when they're playing and the outcome of that tournament. Those is more things that media should attend and come and see the good side of what our kids are doing. It's saddening because this was like the central, you know, this is the tournament that's, you know, brought the South Sudanese community together. When the society hear that there is a tournament or there is a South Sudanese tournament, you will see the stadium is full of police. They just take the negative side. They're not there to support them or enjoy. They're there to look at them like they are criminal, they are doing some bad thing. But unfortunately, it wasn't the case. The negative effects did not only begin in basketball. The effects continue to different fields of sports. Majuk faces these effects of racism in football. One time, um, we were playing against uh, Chelsea. It was um, had a, you know I was talking with some player, and then he didn't like what I was saying to him. Uh, it was just a bit of banter. Then he took it to another level, you know, saying I'm a black C U N T. So I was like, not I was like, I was like, what's going on here, you know? So I was angry. I was shocked too. I was like, like I, was, I thought. In this stone and age, you know, get, you get better, you know. All this, all this news about African games coming out, you wouldn't see a major, a major headline about an African unless it was like sports or fashion or anything like that. It was an article about a little Sudanese kid or a little some little African boy, and it just it made people think that all of us are evil. Being judged by 1% is bad because you know what the 99% feel like. 
I would get people that wouldn't even want to sit next to me on the train. And it was peak hour, you know, five o'clock. Train is packed and people wouldn't even want to sit next to me. Daughter of Jerusalem is a group of South Sudanese mothers who band together to ensure that no children are left trapped and unable to return home. So as the parents, we have role to, to play, to support the society and make the Australian community feel comfortable, taking some responsibility to let the police respond to the, to the uh, uh, highest or immediate needs. And when they saw a bunch of kids uh, gathering together, they got our contract number. They call us and they say, hey, can you guys come and help us with this? And then when we end up and come in and check with the kids, we just find out they, they're just chilling. They're having fun. They haven't done anything wrong. So we decided to go to the train stations, look out for young those kids that have whoever been drunk, find out where they live, trying to support them, provide food for them. For me right now, um, I'm also trying to create a program to help people, you know, like me that grew up the way we did and like the lack of support we got and stuff like that. So we're trying to put together something to help the next generation because we don't want what happened before to happen again. Uh, I was very happy that we had that protest. I felt like it did open a few people's eyes. There was, a, there was actually um, a lot of social media posts about it too. And to me, I felt like it kind of opened a few people's eyes, but just not enough. You know, I feel like there needs, there needs to be more. There needs to be something bigger, you know. They can no longer just tell stories about a group of people without those people challenging those stories. We've moved from, from a time where the storytellers and the people who got to define the world are now being challenged. And I think that's a very uncomfortable feeling for a lot of people. What we are experiencing with the Black Lives Movement, the Me Too Movement, is these parallel ways of how society have been organized in the past and a new demand by a group that have been historically um, disenfranchised, demanding that you know, they be heard too. If my kids, I've got three boys. If the boys are walking with their cousin and the neighbors will look at them and seeing them as a gangs, that's a fear to me because they've been leveled for something that they haven't done. And that's why I thought that it's better for me to go back home, take my kids back. And I have to think twice. I thought Australia would be a second home for me, as it is, but I'm, facing a lot of challenges living in Australia. <laughs>